Hello, my name is Jam Labong, and I will be discussing about the philosophy of social science, the value of responsibility in the social realm, and its remedy for structural injustices. So basically, I will be discussing or introducing two themes, political responsibility and the responsibility of intellectuals, possibly juxtaposing two fields, so philosophy and the social science. So I shall begin this integration of both social science and philosophy by bringing into the table their common denominator, which is responsibility, the concept of responsibility. Of course, you have tons of responsibility quotes, um, like you see in this slide, aside from the very well-known adage, Spider-Man adage, with great power comes great responsibility. So, but this exact same concept is one of the primary causes of our social ills. And the question really is, who is responsible? Is there someone to be blamed for all of these? Say for instance, no, there's a single mother who lives with her only daughter and then the single mother uh, decides to, to terminate the contract of the apartment with the apartment so they were forced to look for another place to live in. Um, in the midst of the pandemic, before the actual date of their dismissal, because the rent was too expensive for her. So the, so the mother tried to look for an extension because it was difficult to find a place that would accept them because they were in the pandemic and those were the first weeks of the lockdown and everything was a mess. Her company was on a break for a while and they were waiting for operations to resume. So the single mother tried to ask for relatives to let them stay for a while but it was too risky because everyone was in panic and no one was still ready to accept people in their homes so the single mother took her daughter to her office as they resumed operations and her bosses allowed them to stay in the office while things are not going well so the mother would have ample time to save money um, to look for an apartment to stay in. What's fortunate is that before facing homelessness, a company was willing to take them in an office that has little to no space for residents. And why am I telling you this story? One, it demonstrates that I would present as the main social issue that I shall be discussing in this lecture. Yun ngang tinatawag natin structural injustice. And two, because the story is very personal to me, as it is also my story, and I know that this experience had so many social elements in it that I can't wait to share with all of you in this lecture. And one of the most prevalent questions that we would often ask, um, especially now in the situations that we're in, is who is and should be blamed for these situations? Is it the mother who couldn't pay for the rental fees? Is it the landlord who couldn't be sympathetic enough to allow for an extension? Is it the relatives? Is it the government? Is it the whole system? So I will be presenting two important themes in the attempt to elaborate on this social issue. One, applying some perspectives of social science through Noam Chomsky's responsibility of the intellectuals and two, discussing a political philosophy problem about structural injustices through the perspective or insights of some political scientists, social scientists, and of course, philosophers. In between these discussions, I shall give my analysis. So to our first point, social science and responsibility. So responsibility is heavily embedded in the concept of social science because in a, in a society, members interact with one another. So it follows that the notion of interaction involves the notion of being responsible. And to be responsible of your co-members in the society means that we acknowledge that there are conflicts and in interactions. And to be able to keep that system going, 
and to achieve an equally collective objective, there is a need to fulfill fill these specific duties, roles, or responsibilities. So, tama si Chomsky, no? Nung sinabi niya na it is the responsibility of intellectuals to speak the truth and to expose the lies. It might not necessarily mean na ito yung pinaka um, responsibility ng intellectuals to, to expose lies and to expose truth. But really, it remains central. This is particularly crucial in people with privile privileged positions, with those who have ample resources, authority, power, the knowledge. So maybe Spider-Man was really right when he said responsibility is linked with power. What happens kasi in Chomsky's message is that for those who have positions that are of privilege compared to that of others, their responsibility actually increases. Isa pang instance would be yung mga individuals like us, students for example, or the faculty who live in a supposedly free society. We hold advantages that others don't have access to. So the responsibility attributed with this is that since we have the freedom to speak up about just about everything, then we have the responsibility to speak up about injustice. What more if we have higher privileges. So for example, if you belong to the think tanks of the nation, then you are expected to really speak up about the deepest of all injustices, right? In Chomsky's words, it would really be exposing lies. And by this, he means that it is indeed the responsibility of intellectuals to somehow make sacrifices, to join social movements, to be vocal, to be active. So there's an essay I read. So sinasabi nito na history narrates that the objectives of these powerful figures that we know of today as the wealthy, the politicians, or those with people with high power are actually consistently doing stuff for themselves alone. So the detriment always fall to those under their rule. So here Chomsky argues or would argue that it is ne necessary that if we are to know the intentions of those higher ups, we need to look at how they act and not be swayed by their mere rhetoric. So this is why sometimes it's really easier and more peaceful to just leave the flow of things as is. Like, wala ka nang pake. Just bahala na sila dyan. What happens during heated political discussions is that we are tempted to stay neutral and subconsciously we, we just want to serve their interests na lang because we are trying to preserve this so-called peace. So this explains why a lot of Filipinos don't engage in political discussions or even dare stand up against the powerful or and instead, sumunod na lang. So to not have any responsibility at all is really harmonious. Reality speaking, realities, realistically speaking, but only temporarily and only to a certain extent. To be bothered is part of our being social beings. And this is why responsibility is so important in social science as much as it is for Chomsky that it makes you want to do something about the messed up systems that you see around you. And it makes you obsessed about fixing the social flaws. Once you see the truth, there's really no turning back. So with all that being said, we now go to our second theme, which is structural injustice and political philosophy. So here we will be discussing about political responsibility. Taking the perspective of the social sciences into consideration as we did earlier, we go back to my introductory situationer. Who is responsible for the situation? Is it sheer bad luck? As someone who really experienced this firsthand, I would have guessed so. But the situation is nothing new. It's almost as if it's a predictable formula. Usually, kasi de ba nangyayari talaga siya at nangyayari siya ngayong pandemya sa karamihan ng mga individual at pamilya. And we all know for a fact that this is not something that we should simply tolerate because we know that there's something wrong and there's and that's because there's an underlying injustice. 
So the author, Iris Young, of the essay called Structural Injustice and Political Responsibility, says that the things that happened to the single mother and her family were a result of the so-called neoliberal operations that they were in. Dagdag pa yung detrimental effects ng pandemia. So the difficulties they have experienced were socially caused taking all these into consideration. So, according to Young, this happens to a lot of renters. And what happens to these situations is that these are outcomes of actions of different agents at play. For example, real estate brokers, business owners, the government, etc. So, this is why we have what we call structural injustices. And it matters to the social sciences because responsibility is largely at the core of this. In her political philosophy, responsibility is no longer just a liability. It is not connected to the structures or systems that we experience in our society. So for example, for John Rawls, a structure is one that distributes fundamental rights and duties fairly and merong social cooperation. This is important because this asserts that there are var- various social positions at play. Therefore, magkakaroon ng structural injustices kapag yung processes sa structures kung saan nagpa-participate yung mga tao, nagkakaroon ng damage in any way. So, dito papasok yung tinatawag nating political responsibility. In hindsight, we, we may not really see ourselves directly responsible for any injustices that we may think or we have just mentioned a while ago. And political responsibility responsibility is more than just being a liability because for one, responsibility as liability is linking the actions to the agents directly and eventually to the outcome of these actions. But political responsibility survives even without the blame factor that we attribute to the liability model of responsibility. Political responsibility compared with liability model of responsibility is very generic or should I say collective. Even if we cannot attribute who is responsible for such and such, yung mga questions na tinatanong ko kanina, how I frame my questions, there is a responsibility in the collective sense. So we remember four things according to Young. Connection, power, privilege, and interest. So by connection, Iris Young, Iris Young defines this as kinokonect tayo ng actions natin sa system or processes na nagkukos ng injustices sa iba. Kapag power naman, in a sense, na yung actual power ng tao ay nakaka-influence or mas may may influence pa sa actual processes na kilala nating naglalabas ng outcomes. So here, it's the power itself that produces the outcomes. So, thirdly is the privilege. Ito yung nagiging outcome ng structural injustices sa iba. If we have produced victims, we simultaneously produce people who acquired privileges because of that event. And finally, we have interest. Ito naman yung various interests ng involved agents sa pag-transform or pag-sustain ng tinatawag nating structural injustice. So we have discussed injustices mainly because these have become our basis of evaluations if institutions or whether or not institutions or structures really fulfill their duties on the preservation or in the achievement of a good life. So discussing the concept of responsibility from the point of view of both these domains of knowledge, social science and philosophy through the insights of Chomsky and Young allows us to see the bigger picture of our relationship with one another, that we are indeed not islands. Everything we do has effects on others, and political responsibility tells us that we have shared responsibilities as well. And to do this, we need the intellectuals to work with us para magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating collective action. And for that, I conclude my presentation.